In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. By means of his word and supper, we gather together this day to receive our Savior's mercy and respond to him in thanksgiving and praise. Because of our sins of thought, word, and deed, we are spiritually bankrupt and unworthy of the grace we receive. Yet, at the invitation of our loving Redeemer, we come to his table and take our place with him. Acknowledging our sin, let us find refuge in our God of grace and say, God be merciful to me, a sinner. Together, let us pray. Almighty God, have mercy upon us. Forgive us our sins and lead us to everlasting life. That we may enjoy the fullness of your presence and the peace you have prepared for all who are trusting in you. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father has had mercy upon us and has given his only Son to die for us, and for his sake forgives us all our sins. To those who believe on his name, he gives power to become the children of God, and has promised them his Holy Spirit. He that believes and is baptized shall be saved. Grant this, Lord, unto us all. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, in this sacred meal, you have left us a remembrance of your suffering and death for our salvation. As we eat with you in the kingdom of God, grant that our hearts and minds may be turned to you alone. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit. One God, now and forever. Amen. The Old Testament reading for tonight is from Exodus chapter 24, beginning with verse 3. Moses came and told the people all the words of the Lord and all the just decrees. And all the people answered with one voice and said, All the words of the Lord that the Lord has spoken, we will do. And Moses wrote down all the words of the Lord. He rose early in the morning and built an altar at the foot of the mountain and twelve pillars according to the twelve tribes of Israel. And he sent young men of the people of Israel who offered burnt offerings and sacrificed peace offerings of oxen to the Lord. And Moses took half of the blood and put it in basins, and half of the blood and threw it against the altar. Then he took the book of the covenant and read, read it in the hearing of the people. And they said, All that the Lord has spoken we will do, and we will be obedient. And Moses took the blood and threw it on the people and said, Behold, the blood of the covenant of the Lord, that the Lord has made with you in accordance with the, all these words. Then Moses and Aaron, Nadab and Abihu, and seventy of the elders of Israel went up, and they saw the God of Israel. There was under his feet, as it were, a pavement of sapphire stone, like the very heaven for clearness. And he did not lay his hand on the chief men of the people of Israel. They beheld God and ate and drank. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And our epistle reading is from 1 Corinthians chapter 10, beginning with the 16th verse. The cup of blessing that we bless, is it not a participation in the blood of Christ? 
The bread that we break, is it not a participation in the body of Christ? Because there is one bread. We who are many are one body, for we all partake of the one bread. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. The Holy Gospel according to St. Mark, the 14th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. On the first day of unleavened bread, when they sacrificed the Passover lamb, Jesus' disciples said to him, Where will you have us go and prepare for you to eat the Passover? And he sent two of his disciples and said to them, Go into the city, and a man carrying a jar of water will meet you. Follow him. And wherever he enters, say to the master of the house, The teacher says, Where is my guest room, where I may eat the Passover with my disciples? And he will show you a large upper room, furnished and ready. There prepare for us. And the disciples set out and went to the city and found it just as he had told them, and they prepared the Passover. And when it was evening, he came with the twelve, and as they were reclining at table and eating, Jesus said, Truly I say to you, one of you will betray me, one who is eating with me. They began to be sorrowful and say to him, one after another, Is it I? He said to them, It is one of the twelve, one who is dipping bread into the dish with me. For the Son of Man goes as it is written of him. But woe to that man by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It would have been better for that man if he had not been born. And as they were eating, he took bread, and after blessing it, broke it and gave it to them, and said, Take this is my body. And he took a cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, and they drank, and they all drank of it. And he said to them, This is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many. Truly I say to you, I will not drink again of the fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it new in the kingdom of God. And when they had sung a hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O God. We confess our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten and not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under conscious Pilate. He suffered and was buried. And the third day he rose again, according to the scriptures, and ascended into heaven, and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory, and shall hold the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and the Heir of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come.
On this Holy Thursday, we gather in church to remember and participate in the reception of the body and blood of Jesus, to contemplate his sacrifice for us, and to remember how he served us. It was on this day that Jesus and his disciples celebrated the Passover meal. Here we see Jesus, together with his disciples, participating in the annual festival observance as they remember the saving actions of God upon their forefathers who were in slavery in Egypt. The children of Israel, under cruel oppression in Egypt, were commanded to sacrifice a spotless lamb, placing its blood on the doorposts of their home, and eat the flesh of the lamb in haste, not keeping any part of it until the morning. When death passed over each home, those homes that had marked their entrance with the blood of the lamb, and who ate the Passover lamb at their table fellowship, were spared from death. However, those, ho those homes that did not sacrifice a lamb, place its blood on the door frame, and eat the flesh of the lamb, those homes experienced death. The firstborn male, human, and animal of the household died. What followed was weeping and wailing throughout Egypt. And Pharaoh, in rage, commanded the children of Israel to leave. It was during this Passover meal of remembrance that Jesus takes unleavened bread, blessed it, and broke it to share with his disciples, and said, Take, this is my body. Then he took the cup of wine, gave thanks, and gave it to them, and said, This is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many. Holy Communion is a participation in the very body and blood of Jesus, and all that he is including life, salvation, love, forgiveness, hope, grace, mercy, and he is the one who brings us into fellowship with other believers. Holy Communion testifies that we are members of a new body, the church, the people of faith. We are brothers and sisters in Christ. Listen again to our epistle reading today. The cup of blessing that we bless. Is it not a participation in the blood of Christ? The bread that we break. Is it not a participation in the body of Christ? Because there is one bread. We who are many are one body. For we all partake of the one bread. Unlike the children of Israel, where every house had their own Passover lamb, Christians all partake of the one and only Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world, Jesus. He is the once-for-all sacrifice for our sins. His death makes atonement and accomplishes the reconciliation that we need in our relationship with God and one another. In Holy Communion, we are united with Jesus and with all our brothers and sisters in Christ, including the great cloud of witnesses who have gone before us and who surround us. In Holy Communion, we are one in Christ. This evening, our confirmation students will participate in their first Holy Communion. Luther's small catechism says the Lord's Supper is the true body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ under the bread and wine instituted by Christ himself for us Christians to eat and to drink. When Jesus commands something, it is important. When Jesus institutes something, it is relevant. When Jesus models something, it is to be pursued. 
when Jesus demonstrates something, he wants it to be understood. In Holy Communion, Jesus has instituted and desires continual, reverent participation. Jesus not only desires that you eat his body and drink his blood, but that you trust that his body was given for you and his blood shed for you for the forgiveness of your sin. Yes, Jesus intends for you to remember his sacrifice on the cross and to know that his very body and blood that earned forgiveness for you is there. And to know that where there is forgiveness of sin, there is also life and salvation. So when you come to the table today, remember. Remember what Jesus accomplished for you and how he earned it. Remember his sacrificial death. Remember the cross. Remember that you are receiving the body and blood of Jesus, his body broken, his blood shed, as an undeserved gift for you. In Holy Communion, Jesus serves us. This is Jesus. He humbles himself. He leaves heaven and comes to earth. He loves us and cares about us. He has come to seek and to save the lost. He gives and serves and has compassion. He is the good shepherd who cares for the sheep. He also calls us to the service and care and love for one another. Think about it. The upper room. It is in the Gospel of John where we are told about Jesus pouring water into a basin. And at this final Passover meal, Jesus serves his disciples. Here, he humbles himself once again and washes their feet. The washing of feet is not done by the host of the Passover meal. It was always performed by the lowliest of servants. The disciples are confused, and Peter resists. But it is for a reason and for a purpose. When he had washed their feet and put on his outer garments and resumed his place, he said to them, Do you understand what I have done to you? You call me teacher and Lord, and you are right, for so I am. If I then, your teacher and Lord, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have given you an example that you also should do just as I have done to you. The washing of the disciples' feet is the institution of a call to service. No one is above serving one another. Jesus does not want us to just leave the serving up to him. He wants us to participate. He wants us to join him. He wants us to be served by him, and he wants us to serve one another. He gives the example. On this Holy Thursday, Christ Jesus is with us. He calls us to remember that we receive him, his body and blood, he calls us to remember his suffering and death. He calls us to remember that we are to serve as he has served us. He calls us to receive, to receive his gifts, to receive his service, to receive the forgiveness that he has earned for us. Yes, today we are called to the table to receive God's love for us, to receive Jesus. Amen. Brothers and sisters in Christ, let us lift our hearts and voices to the God of all mercy as he has invited us to pray to him in the name of our Savior and in the way in which he has taught us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Our Father in heaven, look with mercy upon us. 
For without your aid, we are spiritually poor, crippled, blind, and lame. Grant us grace that your holy name is kept sacred among us, and that in all the world, your Son may be known through the preaching of your word to the ends of the earth. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. King of kings, may your rule and reign come to us and expand throughout the world. Bring all who are blinded by sin and bound by death to know Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world. Work through our earthly leaders and public servants so that your hand of blessing may be known to all. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Strengthen us by your Spirit according to your will, both in life and in death, in the midst of both good and evil things, that by faith we cling to the one who was betrayed and handed over to death for us. Into your care we commend those who have needs of both soul and body. Especially today we remember Rick Thorburn and we ask for continued healing. For Gerald Teat, for healing. And for Lori Piper, who's receiving hospice care. We remember those who are suffering the tragedy in Maryland and in Rockford. For these and for all those we name before you, in the silence of our hearts, we ask that your will may be done among us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. How blessed we are to eat bread in your kingdom, O God. Lord Jesus, you alone are the bread of life, and you alone satisfy our hungry hearts. Grant to us our daily bread and help us to realize that you're, you daily and richly provide for all that we need according to your own riches and grace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Forgive us our sins as we also forgive those who sin against us. Center our hearts and minds on you alone. As we recognize that we are spiritually bankrupt without your mercy, grant that the spirit of unforgiveness be removed from us so that we live in peace with you and with one another. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lead us not into temptation, O Lord, but help us to take refuge in your grace. On this very night, you were betrayed by one of your own and handed over to death. Direct us to follow you to the cross of Calvary, where you lay down your life to deliver us from the evil one and all his works and all his ways. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We belong to you, O Lord. Renew us, guide us, and lead us, so that we may bless your holy name and celebrate the feast you have prepared for us. For yours is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, now and forever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give them thanks and grace. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who invites us to this eternal banquet table and feeds us with the bread of life, which alone satisfies our hungry hearts and enables us to joyfully experience his presence forever. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and we magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying,
Blessed are you, Lord our God, King of all creation, for you have had mercy on us and given your only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. Jesus prepares his table before us and invites us to feast with him in his eternal kingdom. Grant us your Holy Spirit, that we may faithfully eat and drink of the fruits of Christ's cross and receive the blessings of forgiveness, life, and salvation that come to us in his body and blood. Hear us as we pray in his name and as he has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night in which he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take ye, this is my body given for you, this do in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood shed for you for the forgiveness of sin. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Amen.
Let us pray. O Jesus, Lamb of God, we thank you for refreshing us through the gift of your body and blood in this sacred meal. Enable us with renewed minds and hearts to always love and trust in you alone. You live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen.
who see me mock me. They make mouths at me. They wag their heads. He trusts in the Lord. Let him deliver him. Let him rescue him, for he delights in him. Yet you are he who took me from the womb. You made me trust you at my mother's breast. On you was I cast from my birth. And from my mother's womb, you have been, my God. Be not far from me, for trouble is near, and there is none to help. Many bulls encompass me, strong bulls of Bashan surround me. They open wide their mouths at me, like a ravening and roaring lion. I am poured out like water, and all my bones are out of joint. My heart is like wax. It is melted within my breast. My strength is dried up like a hot shirt. My tongue sticks to my jaws. You lay me in the dust of death. For dogs encompass me. A company of evildoers encircles me. They have pierced my hands and feet. I can count all my bones. They stare and gloat over me. They divide my garments among them, and for my clothing they cast lots. But you, O oh Lord, do not be far off. O oh, you, my help, come quickly to my aid. Deliver my soul from the sword, my precious life from the power of the dog. Save me from the mouth of the lion. And you have rescued me from the horns of the wild oxen. I will tell you your name to my brothers. In the midst of the congregation, I will praise you. You who fear the Lord, praise him. All you offspring of Jacob, glorify him. And stand in awe of him, all you offspring of Israel. Fourth, he hath not despised or abhorred the affliction of the afflicted, and he has not hidden his face from him, but has heard when he cries to him. From you comes my praise in the great congregation. My vows I will perform for those who fear him. The afflicted shall eat and be satisfied. Those who seek him shall praise the Lord. May your hearts live forever. All the ends of the earth shall remember and turn to the Lord, and all the families of the nations shall worship before you. For kingship belongs to the Lord. He rules over the nations. All the prosperous of the earth eat and worship. Before him shall bow all who go down to the dust, even the one who could not keep himself alive. Posterity shall serve him. It shall be told of the Lord to the coming generation. It shall come and proclaim his righteousness. 